Are you ready to make a savvy investment in Tampa Bay real estate? Investing in a condo in this coastal region holds immense potential for returns, but it's crucial to understand the pros and cons to sidestep expensive blunders. In this video, I'll share must ask questions for anyone considering purchasing a condo in Tampa Bay. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm gonna present nine tips to consider before purchasing a condo. I'm Patricia Sagastum. I'm a realtor here with Florida Executive Realty. There's a lot going into um, decision-making for purchasing a condo, the same for single family homes or townhomes, but there've been recent new laws that are taking effect this year. So it's gonna be important. It will make a difference in whether you wanna go forward or not. So here are the tips and let's get started. Tip number one, flood zone savvy. Before you commit, ensure your potential condo isn't swimming in a flood zone. If so, find out what remedial action the association does in case of flooding. Do they use a sump pump, sandbags, or purposeful landscaping? If you're eyeing a ground floor condo, you'll want to know. So if you didn't know this, Florida is one of the most flood prone states in the country. And there was a recent CBS report that cited one third of all the properties in the state in Florida were subject to a looming flood risk in the near future. So uh, with that in mind, uh, this year there was new laws that were passed that if you uh, wanted to qualify for citizens insurance, that if your property was valued at 600,000 or more, you were required to have flood insurance regardless of your flood zone. So that's gonna be the focus going forward that to get everyone on flood insurance. But for now, let me go over the flood zones. So if you're in A or V zones, those are definitely flood zones. Moderate to low risk is B, C, and X is the most desirable. That is not a flood zone. And zone D, that hasn't had enough um, flood analysis, but it's known to be in a flood zone. Now I want to go over one other point. If you're working with a realtor, make sure you ask them to look, or you can even do it yourself. You can look on FEMA maps, FEMA.gov or SmartGov. Is it SmartGov? FloodSmart.gov, and to find out what, where your property is located, what zone. Because I've noticed myself that uh, looking at properties on the MLS, the listing service that we use, that some are mis mislabeled. Some of these X zone properties are not they're in a flood zone they're not safe um, and i've noticed especially several times like a handful of times that new building construction maybe their whole maybe their whole area was not in a flood zone but there were pockets because i've certainly seen new homes listed as zone x that were definitely in a flood zone so um, make sure you do your due diligence or have your realtor i always do i don't assume everything in the mls is exactly right because i want to check you know so make sure you do that Number two, find out the history of flooding. Take a deep dive into the property's past. The good news is that recent laws require that owners must reveal past leaks and flood damage. So we've always had the seller's disclosure, but now owners are going to have to put in writing whether they've had a flooding in their, in their condo, any kind of leakage, and they've had to file for an insurance claim. So that's going to be very helpful for buyers. Along with that, they're going to have to also prove that their HVAC, the electrical, their plumbing, um, their outdoor sprinkler system, they're all in working order, and also reveal if they've ever had termites or they've had to tent and or um, if, they've had, if they have sinkholes. Tip number three, ease of access. Make sure you've got smooth access to and from your condo property. If you're considering a beachfront condo, be prepared to evacuate every time there's a hurricane or flood warning. Tip number four, building construction. Concrete, block, wood frame, or stucco. Know what you're getting into. Wood frames will need more TLC, especially with Tampa Bay's humid climate and pesky termite tendencies during rainy seasons. Concrete block is the best, and check the building structures and repair budget. Are they paying a lot for repairs? If so, it may point to a comprehensive problem throughout. Tip number five, check condo fees. Have they recently gone up? Insurance rates have skyrocketed and those increases affect association fees. If they have gone up, find out why. 
tip number six, ownership percentages. Watch out for condos with one dominant owner. It may prevent sales to finance buyers. Cash buyers might have an edge here. Now this is a problem that I'm seeing quite a bit. It's coming up more frequently and I can't stand it. It's where one owner owns a majority of a unit of the units in a complex. So lenders, mortgage lenders are not going to want to finance a buyer buying a unit in that building. Why? Because that one owner has an unusual amount of sway in the management of the association. Maybe they don't approve funding that for repairs or something like that. But that's never a good thing and that's increasing. Um, the other thing too, as a buyer, you, you won't even qualify if you're, if you're a finance buyer. Only cash buyers will be able to buy in a condominium where there's predominantly uh, one strong owner. So that's never good. Uh, it lowers the property values of the property and it also excludes buyers who are financed. Tip number seven, understand your condo rules and regulations. If you want to invest and lease your place, know the leasing rules. Each place is unique. You may not be able to lease your unit right away. Some places require you live there one or even two years before leasing. Make sure you understand the pet policy. If you have an emotional support animal, it may not be allowed. Tip number eight. If you're considering purchasing a condo in a building that will be 30 years old or older by 2025, and it's over four stories high, ask for the milestone inspection report. Every realtor should know this. This is a must. You'll find out what condition or state of repair your complex is experiencing. It's really important for coastal condos. Make sure you get that. And finally, tip number nine check the reserves. Ensure the condo association has enough funds set aside. Be diligent about these fees because new laws are playing catch up with past maintenance and neglect. Ask when the roof was replaced. Does the condo need to be retrofitted to bring certain safety elements up to code? How will additional fees be charged? Dealing with special assessments is par for the course in condos, but when hefty sums are due in short order, associations may consider applying for a bank loan. Ask about this and make sure you know when and how much extra you're paying and for how long. Right now for condo buildings over three stories or more, the associations are now required to maintain enough money in their reserves to maintain the structural integrity of the building. One last thing I wanna mention at the bottom of this video, I'm gonna post a link to a remarkable series report by the Tampa Bay Times. I think it was a three or four part series, but they really went into depth about corporate ownership here in Tampa Bay, the impact. And there's even a section where you can plug in an address and find out where corporate ownership, um, where it stands in your neighborhood. You'll see dots all over, but um, the series quite is quite good because it shows you the impact for buyers and sellers, tenants as well too. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. And if you have any questions, feel free to call, text, or email me. I love hearing from you. So until next time, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.